Hey guys, Miracle Max again. Today I hope I have a quick repair for you. What we're looking at is an Asus Nexus that has a non-charging issue. So let's pull it apart and have a look at it. done quite a few repairs with Samsung's and iPads etc. One thing I like about this little Nexus is the ease of which you can pull it apart. The others you have to pull the screen off and you know try and get it off without breaking it etc. Whereas this little fella here is actually not too bad to get apart. If you can get your fingernail under there just like that, cruise around, go here and there, do 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 do, as long as your fingernail doesn't mind the, the pressure. There we go, just pop him off around there, and job's done. So we've got access to the circuitry on the back there, not an issue. Now remember I said it had a problem with charging. Now this is our charge port here. One of the main problems that this particular one suffers from, you can replace the charge port and that's not really a problem. Um, they're readily available and not overly too hard to do. So if we're getting close enough, this little charge port is what causes the issue. Now, if we have a close look, you can see it's actually deformed, isn't it? This section here is sitting up. And um, what happens is people just pop the uh, charge uh, connector in there, and then they just yank it out here, there, and everywhere. And apparently this guy's kids do that quite often. What they have been doing apparently is, you know, just yanking the hell out of the thing, just pulling it out rather than actually carefully removing it uh, directly or carefully removing it straight out. They're just pulling it off to the side or up and down. Therefore that's distorting our jack and not creating a good connection. Look how loose that is, that's shocking. I have seen some success with just reshaping this particular charge port because what happens is as the connector goes in it gets all floppy and then it doesn't provide a good connection. So let's see if we can tighten up that jack and uh, let's see if we can get it to charge again. So hopefully just by applying a little pressure with some pliers onto the jack itself, we can close that together and hopefully that will make the difference that we need. It may need some um, tension on it up and down as well, but it's going to be a little process to see if it works or not. That's already tighter, that's much much better. but. Um, we just need to continue to try and, and of course you don't want to squish it so much that you can't get your jack in there. It's taken several attempts to squish it both sideways and up and down as well to compress it a little better. But if we have a look here, I can just gently draw it out and in, in actual, whoops, in actual fact it's fairly tight but it's going to fit in nicely and it's going to uh, put pressure against the terminals there. So let's see if it charges. This tablet has been dead flat for quite some time. It's going to take quite some time to charge it up so I'll chuck it on the charger and uh, see if we can get it to kick in. We'll see if it's going to um, show its charge. And as you can see it says charging and at the moment it's at 35%. I'll allow it to continue to charge. Just giving that connector a good wiggle and you can see it's cutting in and out. So it's got charging and not charging. So I may have to change the actual um, port itself. Just to give you an idea of actually what the task is at hand is to show you how small this component actually is. Now forgive me if I go out of focus but that's the charging port that we need to replace this component here. But also notice one, two, three, four, five five pins, I think there are, five or six pins, how small they are. These are the ones that have got to be soldered into place, including these four bracing ones or earthing ones 
that hold the actual charge port in place. So as you can appreciate, it's not a small task. Before going any further, it's a good idea to remove the battery connector itself, stop any shorting from happening. That, that just clips into place, so you just lift that up, uh, perhaps with your spudger or something, just get under there and flip it up, and uh, then we'll stop any uh, shorting issues. It's not a bad idea to use some flux, um, even when you're trying to remove components. Uh, it's a good idea so that um, it will help with the, with the removal of the component itself. So we just chuck some on there. Of course on our little terminals right up the back. We'll worry about those in a sec. We'll focus on these hold down ones or the earth ones for now and we'll get to those back pins shortly. Particularly when you're trying to remove something carefully and uh, do as little damage as possible. It's not a bad idea to actually add solder to the component. I know that sounds a bit weird but um, it's actually a good technique to use to try and add to the uh, to the component your own solder and that will actually help remove it. I'm going to use some solder wick at this point to just try and hopefully remove that solder without, without creating problems um, to any components, you don't want to lift anything off the board, any pads or anything like that. I also read online it's not a bad idea to actually, I know this sounds a bit weird, but cutting the uh, connectors off the back of the um, charging jack, charging port I should say, and the goal of that is, it's actually not a bad idea now that I look, think about it, is one of the worst problems is damaging the tracking that comes off where these port connectors go on. So what you're doing is you're cutting across here close to the back of the jack, and once you get these big suckers out of the road, they're the hard ones to get out, it won't matter if you tear this out the road, because they're not connected to the track. Once that's out the road, then these will simply lift off. Once you uh, heat them up a bit, they'll come off quite easily. So the goal is to separate the uh, tracking or the connector of the um, charging port. These little legs here, if we cut it right back here, then we're separating this um, port from the actual circuit board, which will make it less likely to damage any of this tracking. I have done already but just to show you and they suggest about five six times to go on across there and there's no circuitry underneath that will get damaged so just cut across like that and you should be right I've actually found it quite difficult to remove with either the uh, solder sucker that I was using and also the um, solder wick that I was using so what I've done is gently apply pressure with my fingernail in the charge port and just gently lift and um, go backwards and forwards on the solder just try and keep you in frame there and keeping in mind that we've cut those those terminals on the back so we don't have to necessarily worry about that but just gently lifting it up with a tiny bit of pressure not too much pressure and it pops up out of place and it should be all good I'll just check on the back there and make sure that those um, terminals have been cut cleanly through before I pull it up any higher as you can see I've managed to get it off okay I'll tidy up these areas here and those little pot, those terminal connections are okay. There was one that wasn't wasn't uh, too fantastic, but it's come off okay. Now I've tinned these legs here coming out of the charge port um, to make sure that it's all ready to go onto my circuit board here. The most important task is making sure that you get those uh, pins to line up on the circuit board. I've done most of it off screen and what I've had to do is gently push down on the charge port while I heated these two areas and it then sunk down into place which was nice. Then I was able to just gently pull back because I'd pre-tinned these uh, little legs that go onto the circuit board. I was able to just gently tease uh, any bridges that existed away with my soldering iron. That came down nice and then I finally tidied up these with a bit more solder. 
I'm happy with the result. The port itself looks like it's sitting nicely and I can't see any damage inside. I'm now under my 300 times um, digital microscope, just checking out the legs of that um, charge port. They don't look too bad. Um, this sort of piece of equipment uh, is actually a little bit hard to use when you're soldering, etc. But um, quite good for reviewing any of the work that you've done. It seems okay. Look, there's a couple of legs there that I might tidy up, um, get a bit more uh, contact, particularly on their outer left leg. I might just uh, retouch that with a soldering iron and just confirm that I've got good continuity between the leg and the actual um, circuit board pad. So here's after a little more soldering and you can see that all the legs are completely, there's no uh, gaps there. It's completely soldered down onto the pad. So I feel confident now that I should be able to hook up my battery, hook in the charger into the new charge port and hopefully we should see a consistent charging across the board. Okay, I'm just about to turn on the charger for the first time, so let's have a look. Keep an eye on this little symbol over here. So you can see that it says 46%. Uh, just give that cable a bit of a wiggle, and it feels nice and tight, it's good fitting, and it continues to say, whoops, <laughs> continues to say charging, it's not cutting in and out like it did before. So it's pretty good. I'll let it continue to charge, and put it back together, give it to the customer. So what if we learnt from today's repair? Is it okay to try a small sort of modification to hopefully sort out the problem that it has? Or should we go straight to the major repair that's required? Hey, there's nothing wrong with giving the uh, modification a bit of a try. The thing is that we want a total repair. We want something that will not come back to us and bite us in the backside. We want to make sure that our customer's job is done correctly the first time. If that happens to be a modification or a change, we'll go ahead and try it. There's nothing wrong with that. But what counts is a happy customer. Make sure you, that you do it properly the first time. But in this particular case, there's nothing wrong with squishing those ports together to see if that made the difference. This was a bit meh, I wasn't quite happy with it, so I went ahead and replaced the port itself. Overall, I'm really happy with the results. I know that it won't come back to me. So that is the end result a happy customer. If you enjoyed today's video guys and you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel, give it a like and feel free to comment down below. Until next time, this is Miracle Max signing off. Catch you later.